you join us and welcome to the conversation. This is the Jen and Margie show. I'm Jen Belisi. Welcome. I'm Margie Wigan. And we're here to start a conversation with you because we want it to be a community conversation. Jim Cousins, the station manager, asked us to join you to do this because in his words, he feels that we are open and respectful women who will engage and handle different viewpoints. So we hope that you will join us. And um, how do we want to start today? So it's been an interesting week for sure. Yeah. Um, how was your week overall? Busy, rainy. Okay. Busy and yep. rainy, yep. It was, I was not here, I was in New York visiting family. But nice. you were up here doing a lot of Memorial Day celebrations. Yes, on the weekend. Yes, mm -hmm. and you're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Yes. Um, and I'm always, I'm a big military fan. I come from a family of military people and still have people that are serving. So I'm always you know, giving a nod to the military people in, in our town and our family. Um, but why don't you talk a little bit about what you did over the weekend and okay. what it was like. Because I know there was so much going on around in town. Yep. I unfortunately missed it all, but, but always love to hear what's happening. Well, pretty much it was all in one day, um, the Memorial Day observances. Was it on that Sunday or Monday? Oh, on the Monday, okay. Memorial Day Monday. Yep. Um, did you want to give the background of Memorial Day in general? I did. I think, the... you know, when we talk about what we're going to yeah. do during the week, I think it's, um, it's nice for us to kind of get a refresher on a lot and learn a lot, too. So the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day is so Memorial Day is in honoring uh, people who have fallen. Yeah. who have ser served in the military, and then Veterans Day is anybody that has served in the military. Mm -hmm. so or still serving? Still serving in the but, military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, right. um, and it's interesting, I work in an assisted living, and we still have World War II survivors and uh, Korean amazing. War survivors. It's, it is truly amazing, and just starting to get the first round of Vietnam conflict survivors oh, wow. who are living there. So wow. that's been really interesting to see the evolution of things along mm -hmm. the way. Um, do you remember MASH? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love Mash? Of course. I was just—I just caught it last week on. Um, yeah. I forget what channel it was on, but you know, went right into remembering as a kid watching it with my mom and dad, and uh, and just loved it. But but anyway, yeah. so you were here and you were taking part um, in all of that stuff. So right. tell us what happened. Yeah. So I, um, my dad served as a paratrooper, and also was a chaplain's assistant. And the story is he carried the field organ for the chaplain. Because, see, my dad's a singer, so I think he probably sang for the services. So he, he, did, uh, he did some time in the service, and uh, my, you know, I, I greatly respect the service, and I'm very active in scouting. Um, I'm unit commissioner for scouts right now, which just nice. means that I help all the, mm -hmm. the PACs and troops uh, interface with council. So I love to go. I, I so appreciate all the veterans um, and servicemen. Um, my dear across the street neighbor, Peter McGregor, was very active with the veterans and the Masons and the Scouts. So, so I did think he of him as, as well, an honorary or? grandfather. Yes, oh, I'm pretty okay. sure he was in the Navy. Okay. Um, yeah. So my dad was in Vietnam. Oh. My dad, wild story. Um, for those of you who don't know me, of course, a lot of people do not know me, but my dad stepped on a landmine and survived. <gasps> And so, true story. Oh my gosh! Um, really wild. So, Did he fly through the air and legs blown off? Woke or? up in in a hospital somewhere, and um, I think in Japan is where he was sent to. So, really, an incredible story. Lucky. And um, mm. yeah, so still, you know, has repercussions from sure. from that to this Post day. Post traumatic stress for sure. But had um, had certainly was thankful to to come back for sure. Yeah. Um, and grandfathers in World War II and, and many, many uncles mm -hmm. and um, brother-in-law in Iraq and Great. just nephews all over, brother-in-law in Africa he served. So just it, it really permeates our entire fabric. In fact, in my house, I have a wall honoring all the military people in my family. Oh, that's so fabulous. It's a, it's a very sweet, sweet thing. So, go, so I'm sorry, Margie, go back well, to... We, we keep digressing because we have so much to say about that. And, and then just what popped into my head is going to Washington, D.C. with the eighth graders. I was a chaperone and getting to visit that Vietnam vets wall. Oh, that's and amazing. And seeing the memorial where they, they have what looks like Vietnam soldiers mm -hmm. in their camo gear walking through the jungle and it's I just got chills because I can imagine 
but never fully. How could I ever know what it felt to be like in another country and, and defending our freedoms while at the same time fighting for the freedoms of another country. So we just really appreciate all the veterans and the, and the warriors and soldiers and yeah. just an amazing, amazing thing that people do um, and service to our country. Absolutely, I think it's, a, so. it's a, an interesting time to be, yes. to be a soldier. Absolutely. Um, and we invite you to join the conversation. Remember, call us, 508-435-7880, yep. um, hashtag Jen and Margie. You can also email us at live at hcam.tv. So, so to talk about uh, Sunday's fabulous mm. Memorial Day, which yep. I try to go to every year, um, there was a wonderful little uh, brochure, uh, oh, whatever this is called, sweet. program, yeah. And um, so there were observances all over town at all the cemeteries. Um, and it started actually at 945 mm -hmm. in Evergreen Cemetery in Woodville. Yeah. Um, there were different people that spoke. Um, so the, the 945 was Reverend Laurel Kulba from uh, Woodville um, Baptist. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Tess Papagni gave the Gettysburg Address. Kevin Nathan gave remarks. Then 1030, they were at Mayhew Cemetery at the King Flagpole with an invocation by Imam Aga Mehdi Ali, the Islamic Masjumin Center. Um, wow. it's, I'm so happy that we have representatives from all of our worship It's pretty amazing here. when you think about it. It's fabulous. And then 1045 at St. John's Cemetery, of course, Father Cannon of St. John's Church mm -hmm. presided there and, and gave a prayer. Um, there were there were taps played after the prayer. I love hearing that. And they do two players. So David Antaki played, and then um, Ryan Branch echoed. I have to chills. tell you, I was just going to say when I hear taps, I I feel it from my soul. Exactly. And and it, it gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. Yeah. Um, it, it it gives me such a, a solemn moment to reflect yeah. and honor those who served. It really right. is an amazing piece. Of music, so totally, yeah. And then eleven o'clock, they were at the Soldiers Mound at Mount Auburn Cemetery. Tess again gave the Gettysburg Address. Um, there was a prayer by Reverend Bob Cloutier of Faith Community Church, where I so go. So all of our denominations yes. in town came yes. together, yes, to really talk about yes. and express and appreciate and. Well, most. I think I don't think there was anyone from Korean Presbyterian. I don't think we had St. Paul's, but many, many. of our That's denominations. Yeah. And uh, yes, it's fabulous. And then 11:25 at the Memorial Gazebo, the Town Common, um, I came in as America the Beautiful was being played and led by Craig Hay, who is such a Aww. fabulous music director, uh, our high school band. Love it. And Love um, it. the invocation was Reverend David Melvin, who's the chaplain for Brookhaven Hospice. So that's very interesting. Very nice yeah. that they invited him. Then Mia Catino gave the Gettysburg Address. It was going to be Isabella, but there was some something happened and Mia's there. And Perfect. John Catino, of course, gave the remarks. And um, in consideration to the freezing weather, it was really cold. Yeah. Um, he cut short, he said about one and a half pages, but seamlessly, we would never have known in a very meaningful, heartfelt message as John Catino is known for doing. Very nice. Um, yep, and then, um, and then Lieutenant Colonel Brandon Wilkerson gave some remarks. And um, when they were mentioning his honors and all of his different things, mm -hmm. they talked about oak clusters. So I had to ask, what, what, are, what, what is, is an that? oak cluster? Because they said he has this order, this medal. Actually, I wrote here he had tons of medals. Oh, um, oh. and so the, the, the so delineation he, is? So the oak cluster is a, um, it's like an extra. So he already had the purple heart. Okay. And then an oak cluster means that he had a purple heart. And then he got another one, I think. Or it's some kind of extra award on top wow. of the original one. Um, and then uh, the taps there were Luke Whitehouse and Tristan Clark echoed. And then at, at um, 12 o'clock, they raised the flag back up. Mm -hmm. So they lower the flag at, at dawn. And then after all the memorial mm -hmm. observances, they raise it back up to its full height. Oh, so nice. I think that's a really yeah. interesting. And then we sang the national anthem. Very, very so, nice. Yep. And after that, just when you thought it was done, um, at 2 o'clock, Claire Wright, who is Cemetery Commission mm -hmm. Who just person, got reelected. Just got reelected, yep. Board of Selectmen, yes. And um, organized a headstone cleaning um, project. And John Ritz of HCAM was just telling me that when they got there, 
Claire was there and she said, you know what, I, I don't know if this is going to work because it just started to rain. I'm mm -hmm. not sure we're going to get anyone. But he said they had 12 people, including kids. And just when they were about, you know, they did a little cleaning with toothbrushes so you could read the names and, the, and give respect to the headstones. Nice. A guy drove up in under pressure power washing vehicle. His name is Michael. I forget his last name. His son go Grayson goes to preschool. Oh my. And so he donated two hours of his time with his power washing thing. That's pretty amazing. To help clean the headstones. That is That's amazing. what Hopkinton is all about to me. How many headstones, how many veterans um, did they clean? Do you have any idea? Uh, I don't know. Let me, I don't think I have that information in here. We could find out maybe if Claire Wright is listening and she wants to give us a call. Yeah, just just curious um, to see how long that takes every year. I, I don't think everybody around town knows that. That's well, it took two hours with a power washing and, guy. Yeah. So, um, and I'm pretty and that sure was they one were, cemetery, or did they go to? A, the I believe other cemetery they went to all well. the cemeteries. That's and, unbelievable. Um, I, it actually, excuse me, one sec. I'm going to disappear. Sure. Okay. Oh, I'm back. Um, <laughs> in in the Hopkinton Independent, um, in the May 18th issue. Uh, Claire Wright talked about cleaning, but it doesn't say, oh, it said they cleaned over 65 stones last year at Evergreen. Okay. So, but this is talking about cleaning at Mount Auburn Cemetery. So it looks like they clean one Do they do cemetery. like, they go from one to one to one every it year? It seems like they clean one every year. So last year was 65, over 65 at Evergreen. This year was Mount... Um, Auburn, maybe if John Ritz is listening, he could call in and tell us how many stones they cleaned, or maybe we could hear. I don't it from even know how many room. cemeteries we have in town. Well, we have those. We have um, the ones I just mentioned. There's Mount Auburn. There's Evergreen. Mm -hmm. um, there's the one over on Clinton, which is really old. Um, there's the one at the center, oh, and then yeah. the one next to um, the Korean Presbyterian, which used to be the Congregational. I think there are at least five, probably okay. more. That's pretty I'm amazing. Sure who, who even knew about that? It's fabulous. It now is. I'm done. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So we'd, we'd love to hear. Who, are there any veterans who are, who are watching us right now who'd love to call in and talk about what Memorial Day means for them? Um, or anyone who, who is a child of a veteran or who mm -hmm. has experienced or really any comments on how fabulous Memorial Day was um, here in Hopkinton. Um, you know what I love? I love when, um, when the on t in television talk shows or anything like that, new segments, they have um, when the veterans come home and surprise their family members, yeah. like the kids in school. Oh, and, my gosh. You know, not a dry eye in the house. Right. Um, and those those always really hit a home for me. Yeah. Um, I could only imagine what they're, they're going through. So growing up, did you have big Memorial Day celebrations always. in town? I know for your family. So it's interesting. I have no recollection as a child. And I have a really vivid childhood. I remember so much. But I have no recollection of of a Memorial Day or a Veterans Day parade or anything like that. We always mm -hmm. celebrated it privately in our family. Mm -hmm. um, but we grew up in a much, much larger place. I grew up in Long Island, so two million people on an island and, um, and a town that is probably three times the size in population of Hopkinton, mm -hmm. but you know, a third the size in, in, in miles, in mm -hmm. square miles. So I don't, I don't remember it, but I, I do know how important it is to us. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I always think about that. I, I often think about if any of my children wanted to serve in the military, what that would feel like. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that that, to me, at this point in this world, mm -hmm. it would be, it would make me very uncomfortable. But I understand the passion and the pride in doing it. Absolutely. So, and what And about it's a you? risk. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. they're putting their life on the line for our country. That, mm -hmm. that right there just amazes me every time mm -hmm. I'm gonna get tears in my eyes because mm -hmm. it just it just amazes me every every that time. people would care that much and invest that much you know and that we're gonna talk about JFK later mm -hmm. but that yeah. that phrase ask not what you can what your country can do for you ask what you can do for your country right. Civic comes duty. to mind because you know that's what it is we we do have mm -hmm. a lot of, of benefits living here and freedoms so Without a doubt. To give a couple years of your time. And you gain a lot. I, I think that people go into the Army. Some some students go in because then they have, they get their schooling paid for. Right. And then they owe the Army two or four years or whatever. Right. The equivalent of time. The ROTC program. Exactly. Those kind of things. So they yeah. go in the, the reserves. Right. Or the National Guard. Right. Right. And so those things are also available to people. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I love when the Marines come into the schools or, or the Army guys come in and gals and do their recruiting. Yeah. You know, I think that's amazing as well. Mm -hmm. um, yep, my daughter just came home last week and said that. 
she said, did you know, and she was saying, did you know that if you go into the Army training, mm -hmm. you can get your something paid for and then you go ahead. she was telling me and I so her wheels were turning just from what they had to say about it I because it, it makes a lot of sense and my son came home as well must have been the same day that they yes. were there yes and came home and said you know I like I said he liked the music I was listening to and so it was a way for him to engage to him. connect yeah yeah absolutely so what was it like in your family growing up was so it growing up um we really didn't there wasn't that connection that you have in terms of a military family. My family, um, I grew up in Newton, so again, 13 villages. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many people, I have no idea. Yeah. And um, so we didn't, there wasn't a huge um, town yeah. celebration. I think it was more barbecue. Right. You know, um, and I might do remember that my parents would go and clean my grandparents' graves. Um, my grand, I, my mother's parents were missionaries in China, so my mom was actually born in China. What an interesting journey your family's had. <sighs> yes, so they, sure. um, so she would go and clean my grandparents' graves. They were born, they were buried in Newton in the um, United Board of Missionaries hmm. plot. So they would go and clean those graves. So for them, Memorial Day was about visiting their parents and um, honoring the dead. Hmm. Um, you know, and I guess my grandparents served, but not in a military way, so they served it. Although my grandfather did, um, when the Japanese invaded, my grandfather went and um, fought with the resistance. Oh, wow. And hid in caves and fought off the Japanese, not single handedly. <laughs> so he was engaged in combat in some way. It's amazing. It's amazing to think about what our ancestors have seen. Yeah, and what absolutely. our children will see Unbelievable. moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, we call, invite you guys to call in 508-435-7880 and help us join the conversation. Um, yeah, and really, we we just wonder what your memories are of uh, Memorial Day, mm -hmm. and if you have a connection to um, soldiers or fighting men and women. Um, we'd love to hear from some women uh, soldiers. I know I saw. Again, I'm, I'm saying Alicia Shambo's name again. Um, I saw Alicia in her beautiful army, or what, I think she's army, uh, uniform on, on Memorial Day. They also had, um, I have to say, at each location that they did the observance, they had the, the gun salute. And the men who did the gun salute were called the honor guard. Mm. And I am not sure where they come from. I think maybe they rode motorcycles? from one place to another place. Wow. And one of them was Mr. Eric Kellyan, who lives here in town. Um, mm. So I was interested in, um, I'm Ooh. sure they're fighting, they're shooting blanks, you know, into the air. Um, well, we at that so. point at the end of the, we at that so. point at the end of the ceremony, so. Who organized all those events in town? Um, actually, it's the, the Veterans Committee. And wow. I think it's Mirabile who is the head of Jim. that. Jim, Jim oh, Mirabile. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, he does a great job. So he he was the one actually who referred to all of the decorations that the speaker had and the oak oh, clusters. Okay. And I asked him after, what is an oak cluster? And he said it's an extra. So when you okay. have an award, and then you get another one, then okay. they just call it. A, it's like, yeah, you did that times two. Okay. I think. So but someone could call and correct that if they want, because I'm not quite sure. So my father had a, um, an accumulation of medals and bars and all of these things. My dad, so too. He actually divvied them up between my three oh. boys and um, then wrote down what each one meant and oh. how he got it and why he got it and all of those things. So each of them, if they haven't lost them or thrown them away. That's so special. Yeah, have, have, um, have a collection of these. I think they have three or four each. And my, my middle son, Zachary, has my grandfather, so his great-grandfather, who he knew, we only lost five years ago, mm. but has his, um, his veteran of foreign wars wow. beret. Wow. Um, and it's in a, a very neat glass case in his room. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so really amazing. And um, my sister in New York, when we were there, she lives next to a library. And every year, they put up about a hundred flags, um, and they're about four feet tall. So oh. it's a sea. I, I wish I had thought about it, but a sea of flags. Love that. So you, you have to love the patriotism that goes along the way here. So, Absolutely. so we're going to take a short break. Yeah. 
And we invite you to join the conversation. Remember, you can call 508-435-7880. And we're going to talk next about some, some sports. sports. So we have horses and hockey and Celtics coming up. This week on HCAM Television. How instrumental you've been, oh there's a little pun, uh, in, in helping grow the program, Craig, uh, from the, I, I thought about the cellos and the, um, the larger instruments, help me out here. Uh, bass and then we had trombone and French horn. Right, and like the, and yeah. there were issues with, with instruments not being able to have kids bring them on the bus and Craig really worked hard to, with the rental company to have additional instruments provided to the school so that students could, could keep an instrument at home and then have one at the school. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Hi, and we're back. So we have a few corrections that were um, called in and texted and, uh, and emailed. emailed in to us because uh, we want to get it right, obviously. Um, just some details. Alicia Shambo is Navy, and Mr. Eric Hellion is a major in the Air Force. I got that wrong again. Um, how many? So we have an information we have on the cemeteries. Seven cemeteries in town. Yep. Good to know. Yes. Little factoid who knew? And um, just to make sure, I. Uh, you heard when they were cleaning the gravestones, there were 12 people cleaning, and the under pressure guy donated two hours of time, but he was working with them. He didn't do it all himself, which I hope I said, but I just want to make sure we have that right. So now, on to horses, hockey, and Celtics. Exactly. So lots going on. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not a sports girl, although I say that. I played soccer for 27 years. You did? I did. I played for a long time. In yep. fact, when I first moved to Hopkinton, I joined... The, it was an over 30 league I at remember the time. hearing about that, and I didn't want to break anything, so I didn't do it. Over 30. Now I would not qualify for that league anymore, clearly. <laughs> um, but it was a way for me to connect with yeah, the town as great. well. Um, but I guess I did grow up in a sports family, so I know that, that um, you have some friends that, that are passionate and um, kind of in the limelight when it comes to sports. Yes. Um, my my family, I was I loved sports, mm. and I remember playing things in in high school, uh, middle school, high school. But I wasn't on teams, and I think it's because my parents had one car, four kids, and they were just you know sorry. So we're not doing that. It's different nowadays because I had to. My mother said, "You want to join soccer? Fine. You're just gonna have to get your way there." My mother yeah. didn't drive. Ah, oh, see. So, but my, you figured it out because you could walk. And we, Mrs. we McCarthy and came and picked me that's up. That's so perfect. And Mr. Vargas drove, drove me home. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy and Mrs. Vargas. Yeah, probably got it wrong. That's nope. You got it right. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, but I, when I got here, I one of the volunteer things I have done is work with Hopkinton Soccer League, oh. and I coached um, all my kids. Oh, I love it in soccer. And um, when I and I loved every minute of it. That's actually how I know Jim Robley because we were in one of the coaches training. Oh, meeting great. he was there um, but one of my first teaching jobs was at a private school and you know in a private school they get you to do everything so I was the fourth fifth and sixth grade athletic girls coach oh, so okay. I coach softball soccer and basketball so Celtics is something I actually understand I, I get it in basketball you know I know what a point guard is and where you're supposed to go on a three-point shot I do shot not know that and yeah. I have a neighbor um, who shall remain nameless, but she is a basketball coach, and cool. a couple of neighbors are basketball coaches, yes. and I have no idea what they're talking about. However, I will tell you that my favorite sporting event to go to and watch is basketball. Really? Absolutely. Why? I, I don't know. It's the energy. It's like you're feeling like you can yeah. get close to it. Yeah. Um, I, w I lived in Chicago 20 
ish years ago, and I re- it was the days of the Chicago Bulls. Oh yeah, and Dennis Rodman. Oh and my gosh, it was just an unbelievable kind of and Michael Jordan. I mean, to see them, and I had got I was working as a waitress while I was um, going through school, and my manager had these tickets, and I said I will work for all my tips tonight, everything. So I wound up getting two tickets, and I was eight rows behind the Bulls <gasps> bench. It was amazing, Ooh. absolutely amazing. That's that is amazing. Yes. So totally. it was it was just it was great to see. And I think that's when I got hooked, and that's when I had a love of just going to, to uh, yeah. But our poor Celtics, what happened? Well, yeah. So <laughs> what uh-huh. um, I actually uh, talked to Steve Burton, who is a WBZ sports guy, yeah. and he at we some used point used to live in Hopkinton. He used right? to live in Hopkinton. He still goes to Faith Church, and I see him sometimes. So I asked him at church. I said, "Would you be able to call mm-hmm. in or talk to us about sports?" And he said, "Let me get through the Celtics first. That's a quote. Yep. So that was a couple weeks ago. Um, I haven't been able to get a confirmation from him. I know he's busy, but at some point we'll get him in here. And um, so the the, la- the game five, Celtics lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers, mm-hmm. the Cavs. I think it was one thirty-two to one hundred five. So that's not a close game. Not a close game. No high scoring game, but not a close game. No. No. And what happened? In my humble opinion, just from what I knew, when Isaiah Thomas, first of all, such a sad thing, his sister died, and then he had to keep playing, which to me, that would just be a heavy energy burden. How could you? And he said he was playing for her, but still, it would, I just, that pain, I can't even imagine. So he, that was number one. Number two, he got hit in the jaw. I think he broke the jaw, three teeth fell out. He's still playing. You know, so I think his injuries probably affected the team. He's only been on the team, I think, since 2009. He's 5'9", weighs yeah. 185. Um, so not a huge player either in terms of stature. No, right? he's small, but he's quick. But fortitude. He's very quick. He's the point guard. And um, I was at a Memorial Day party with some friends of mine in Medway, and there's this amazing um, sports genius named Curvin, who I hope will call in because he had so much to tell me. Irvin, if you're watching, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, he knows. He knows. I gave him the info. Um, So he was saying, because I mentioned this thing about Isaiah Thomas. I said, do you think Isaiah Thomas's injuries are what happened to the team this year? And he said he thinks it's because the Cavs have an experienced team, whereas... LeBron, right? I mean... Well, LeBron James, but... Also, um, LeBron James was LeBron James was drafted in 2003. Not, so not a spring 14, chicken. but he's been there 14 years experienced working with the team. And then um, Marcus Smart was drafted in 2013 for us. So that's four years right. for one of our stars. And I, IT, Isaiah Thomas, was drafted in 2011. So he's not, you know, he's not been with us for that long. Um, and I think it's one of the things I think is funny was LeBron is listed as a small forward. I've never heard of a small forward. It's a position name. But he's 6'8 and 250 pounds. And they're calling it's him amazing. a... I, I don't know. I, didn't. I like when he does cameos in movies. Yeah. That's, I think he's hysterical. Yes. Yeah, so he has a lot of, a yeah. lot of skill. Um, but Kervin was saying, and I hope he joins us with his opinion, that he thinks that the interesting thing is going to be what they do with their number one draft pick. Because they have... The strength of that number one number one draft pick and being able to, you know, a bargain with that. Yeah. So the question is, do they go for a number one player now, or do they wait and do a trade later to get a more seasoned player? God, I, either way, I think we're going to be in a good position moving forward. Well, he wasn't. Curvin wasn't so sure. Why? And he well, he's saying that um, because we have this newer team. Um, He's just not sure. And the other thing he was worried about was, or he was saying as a concern, is Danny Ainge's legacy. We remember Danny Ainge when he was, I remember when he was playing on the Celtics yep. with Larry Bird and Kevin McGrath. In the day. In the day. Um, so Danny Ainge is now a uh, general manager or something. and But his legacy could be made or broken, according to my my uh, Your friend, my your, your sage, source. My source, yep. uh, Curvin. Because he's saying that if they... If they make a mistake with the pick and the draft, then they then they will have still another weak, not weak team, but not as good a team as they could have. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, and I, I wrote it smaller, so I have to put on my glasses. Um, there's a guy who plays for UCLA, Lonzo Ball, who is a fabulous, amazing 
guy that they can mm-hmm. pull in the draft, but he wants LA Lakers. So he's already said, don't even ask for me. Because I'm not going. Because I'm I want yeah, I'm not going. So then <laughs> Markel, sorry. So Markel Fultz is another top prospect for us, who's a Washington point guard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's gonna be very interesting to see in terms of that, what they do with their trade, what happens to Danny Ainge's legacy. So, you know, it, I just I just know that Celtics, to me, when I think Celtics, I think, wow, winners, and they're unbelievable, and they can do no wrong. I think, I think you know? Boston history, I, yeah, think, I think when you're, when you're headed to, you know, go watch them, you, you're, you're thinking Celtics gear, yeah, Celtics green. everything, green and white, Hawkinson, it's so green Boston, and white it's so mm-hmm. fighting spirit, mm-hmm. um, yeah, similar colors, yep. Um, but I, I, I feel like when you get there, there is that energy that oh, whether yeah. the team is young, old, yeah. you know, weak or strong, there is just that camaraderie that you get when you walk into there. Absolutely. It's, it is amazing. So, if, Don't you feel like it's that way with all Boston sports, though? I do. Yeah? I do. I think it's a great sports yeah, town. Yeah, it is. Yep, the Bruins. And that makes me think of uh, the one hockey game I went to, not my favorite thing, um, the puck hits that glass, yep. and I my face is there, and it, oh, it just scares me every time it hits the glass, oh, yeah. so I'd rather go to basketball. Do you remember it. the day where they used to shatter the glass? That's right now, they, that doesn't happen oh. as often. Right. Um, but I grew up in a hockey family, too. And um, I remember thinking I was going to be um, a sportscaster, and I used to. Oh, you would have been great. No, I don't think so. But thank you for that. Yeah. Little yeah. So, but I remember the Quebec Nordiques and the Hartford Whalers that Wayne they, had, they had the best. Oh my God! But I remember the days of like thinking about my dad's favorite stars were like Bobby Orr and yeah. Bobby Hall and. Yeah. Um, Gordy Howe and just mm-hmm. all of these huge names. Derek Sanderson. Oh my gosh, I don't even know who that is. Yeah, but he's handsome. Okay, good. That's, That's what I great. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a good player, though. Good. Yeah. So but you were going to talk about hockey. I was going to talk about hockey. Yeah. But I, you know, let's let's go Celtics. So any Celtics players who'd like to Woo-hoo! call in tonight, we'd love to speak <laughs> to you because you're not busy right now, probably. So. Um, <laughs> So we have um, the Predators. Yes. And we have the Penguins. So who cares, right? Nashville and Pittsburgh. Who picks these names? The Penguins. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. So, however, both of their coaches are from Boston, from Massachusetts. Isn't that neat? It's not Mike Ruzioni. No. Olympic Sky. No. Who are their coaches? I I have no idea who their coaches were. Yeah. I have no idea. But they were talking about that in the news, saying you know both a little. Um, That's cool. Yeah, a little hometown nod to that. So that was really interesting. And um, Pittsburgh is winning, I think, one game to nothing. So the Stanley Cup playoffs. Is now. We're on. See, We're in the, it. The reason I don't know is because the Bruins aren't in it. So for so me, not even thinking it's about not it. happening. Oh, I'm thinking my husband loves hockey, so yeah. we're, we're in it. That's great. We're watching it, yeah. But there are penguins playing with... Pirates? What did you say? Predators. Pre- mm. Yes, they're. Not I, the don't, same I don't really know what a predator no, is. It's a scary thing. I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't know. <laughs> so, right, did so you play hockey when you were a kid? I did not. Oh. I don't even. I barely know how to ice skate. Do you know what? We. I lived near up. There was a pond down the hill from a friend of mine, and there was a a, a neighbor boy named Tex, mm-hmm. who was you know just one of these little little feisty guys. And so, and I thought he was kind of fun. So we got down there on our skates, mm-hmm. and he's playing. He's playing hockey, and he decides that it would be cute to give me a hip check. But ouch! Yeah, no, not, not for the no, faint of heart. Hockey, ready. for sure. Well, I wasn't faint of heart, but I was down on the ground with the no. painful hip. You know, a little shout out to all the moms yeah. who and dads who bring their kids oh, at yeah. five o'clock in the morning before school right. for hockey. Right. Um, very dedicated. And not just for boys anymore. That's there correct. are girls who play hockey. Absolutely. Yep. And good for them. That's exactly right. As long as they wear mouth guards, I'm good with that. Because a lot of... And helmets. Hockey, and helmets, they of course. They have to do that now. Because Remember when the day you didn't have to wear hockey helmets. It, yeah. And the skate the skate near the face worries me a little. There are always those kind of injuries, for yeah. sure. But mm-hmm. they, they seem a little more dramatic when you've got blades and metal and, and all of those, right. those kind of things. But... Yeah. So yeah, we. So th- I was gonna say, invite parents to call in. Have the guy. Yeah. Like, how hard is it to manage right. a kid's schedule when you're talking about five a.m. practices, weekend practices? Right. I have a friend whose son is on two or three teams at a time. 
in addition to being a high schooler? Right. How do you how do you manage that? Just I logistically, don't know. how do you figure that and out? And then how do the kids sleep if they're if they're up that early? How can they sleep? I enough? think they. I feel like some of them are going to practice before they come to school. Oh, they are absolutely. And then, you know, I I just don't know how that works, but so, I, I did soccer, which was after school with my kids. Did all three of your kids play soccer? Yeah. So I I always this is another thing too, kids in this day and age typically play more than one sport, right? Mm -hmm. Where they play more than one sport at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. So then you're going from lacrosse, you're mm -hmm. going to football, you're mm -hmm. going to this, you're going to that. I mean, to manage that kind of, of schedule yeah, is uh, is very demanding and, and truly unbelievable. It's a feat in and of itself, but, but kudos. Absolutely. I have to say, um, my oldest did soccer um, when we were living in Newton. When we came here, she was more of a bandy huh? and, and chorus, um, but she played softball with Tom McIntyre, may he rest in peace. Oh. And he was such a sweetie, a great guy, you know, obviously, I think of Memorial Day. Um, but he let her sit on the bench, even though, and stay on the team, even though she had broken her arm and leg oh. over February vacation in a rollerblading. Oh. Yeah. So he was so nice to keep her feeling like part of the team, even though she clearly wasn't. You but know. she was. She, yeah. So she. So he. You know. Bless him. It was oh. great. So we did do softball. Um, my son did track and cross country. My youngest um, did soccer, cheer. She tried horseback riding. We're going to talk about horses in a minute. But she's allergic to dust. So when she was cleaning that horse, <laughs> not a good thing. No. Um, and then she's doing field hockey more recently. Oh, so, very. Yeah, very she nice. loves it. So speaking of horses. We had some horse racing, Preakness results. Yeah. Um, who won? Interestingly, who won? the Kentucky Derby winner was always dreaming and started out of the gate really fast, but dropped back to eighth place. You know? Um, some, a horse named Cloud Computing mm -hmm. came in first, 13 to 1 odds. It was a $9,000 win for that horse. 9000 For the, I guess, for the horse and the owner or something. Okay. I, I don't, don't know, know how horse racing. 9000 yeah, nine hundred thousand. Oh, I missed some zeros. That 900. seems like a bigger purse. This is why for we're a, a good kind team. Of a, a big, no, big no, race. Sorry. So nine hundred thousand dollars, and um, and cloud computing moved ahead by a head. Um, Classic Empire came in second. Senior Investment came in third. And this was all on May twentieth at Pimlico Racecourse. Um, I love that. That's in Maryland. I, I believe know. that's in Maryland. Not sure. I, I want to just, can we talk about yeah. something quickly? Yeah, yeah. We just got uh, an Great. email in from Melissa. Awesome. And Melissa was saying that, that some Boston schools are considering a 9 o'clock start time. Yes. To ah. help with children sleep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We should have a whole segment on that because. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, for, it's fabulous. And I'm going to write that down. Um, we love hearing ideas of what you guys want to uh, hear My us talk about. My kids get on the bus at 6.38 in the morning. Yeah. We're up at 5.30. I know. Without a sport in the morning. So imagine what the kids are doing I don't for know. that. My only concern is that it bumps afternoon sports later and coordinating with other schools mm -hmm. when you have to play against another school, they're gonna, they may be on a different time. So then you're just backing everything later. Kids are already going to bed later. That's why they right. want a later start time. But if they have a later start time, they're gonna go to bed even later. I think there's no easy way around right. it. So but anyway, sure. we should definitely, thank you so much, Melissa. We definitely are gonna talk about that. We will. And, and we could get, um, maybe Kathy McLeod would join us for that one. That's an that yeah. from or the Yeah, or Evan committee. Bishop. Somebody from okay. the school committee would be helpful down. too. Thank you. And um, so Preakness just ended, Kentucky Derby already, and now the last one, the Belmont Stakes. So near and dear to my heart, um, I was a one of my first jobs was a valet car parker at the Belmont Stakes because Belmont's in Long Island, mm -hmm. and I live 20 minutes from there. And my father always seemed to know somebody, and was very well connected. And uh, that was just a job that I did. So it was really interesting. I have to tell you, I remember being a kid and my grandmother and grandfather at the dining room table, probably not the best thing that you want to teach your children, but... It's, um, anal it's analysis. Yes, it was. It, and, they, and they, they almost had a Excel spreadsheet at that time yeah. about it, yeah. and they were looking at horses, and my grandfather would go to the track, and he would bet on the horses, and uh, yeah, so I have, a, I have a good memory of that, but, um, but Belmont is, it envelops Long Island at that mm -hmm. time when, when the Belmont Stakes come, so that's a really interesting... Place to be. People are really concerned about 
the welfare of the animals and Good. certainly first and foremost that is always what people are concerned right. about yeah. so um, and being around Hoppington your home is right near a stable isn't it well we have there are a bunch of stables there's a stable on um, Main yep on East Main on the right up the mm -hmm. hill um, my neighbor across the street has a couple of horses. I remember going over there years ago feeding them carrots. There's another seven-acre property next to her that who boards horses as well. Yeah. So yes, once in a while we get a little, yeah. little uh, aroma of horse manure, <laughs> which is okay. You know, feels like we're in the country, which is nice. I love horses. My daughter loves horses. Um, I've ridden horses, but and I, I can totally understand how that must be so exciting to be on that horse right. and and feel that exhilaration. It's kind of how I feel yeah. when I go skiing, feel that exhilaration. Yeah. Maybe feeling like you're part of the horse and you're actually I don't know. It must be very exciting, but it's even more exciting if you win. I guess. I, I guess when you're in a derby too. Yeah. It's got to be more exciting. So yeah. we're gonna take a short break. Yeah. We're gonna come back and then we're gonna talk about the hundredth birthday of JFK. Yeah. So we'll see you in a bit. So, I like to keep things clean because it makes me feel good. It makes my stepmom happy. Margie Wiggins finds out why being clean makes for a good character trait. Is there anything you want to say to the kids about why it's a good idea to be clean? Um, make sure that you uh, wash your hands and don't spread germs and that way you can avoid being sick because nobody likes to be sick. <laughs> Perfect. We are second grade Girl Scout Troop 89242, and we are working on a project to support African refugee children in Worcester. We need your help. The African Community Education Program told us what they need, and we are collecting items. We are collecting Walmart gift cards, packaged cookies, headphones, backpacks, and school supplies. Items can be new or gently used, and the target age is 10 to 18 years old. We are also collecting letters of welcome and acceptance for the refugees. They should be addressed to Dear Friend and not be sealed. Our collections start May 30th and end June 2nd. Collection bins will be at these spots around town. For more information about Afri African refugees, children in Mister, go to acechildren.org. So welcome back, everybody. Our last segment is going to be about JFK, but I wanted to just bring up um, something that I read when I was over the weekend, and I think this is from a Newsday article in Long Island. But right. it talks about Jennifer Aniston, this actress, saying, and she's she's reminiscing and being nostalgic about Friends and how it has changed, and there'll never be a Friends sequel or anything like that. But she talks about. There was something about a time where our faces weren't shoved into cell phones and we weren't like checking Facebook and Instagram and we were in a room together or at a coffee shop together and we were talking, having conversations yeah. and, and we've lost that. So that's a quote from Jennifer Aniston just saying, you know what, we need to just kind of like take a step back and continue the conversation. So we invite you to call and um, we're going to talk about JFK, our youngest president ever, mm -hmm. right, our 35th president. Um, I think, I forget what day it is, but it's this week, I believe, his 100th birthday. I think it was on the 29th. Yep, so just a couple yep. of days ago. Yep. So he grew up in Brookline, right, and Hyannisport. On Beale Street. Yeah, he, uh, his house is still on Beale Street as an historic monument that so people you can visit. So you grew up in Newton. Yep. Close to Brookline. Right. So I lived in kid, Brookline, too. Did you? So as a kid, did you say, that's, that's the Kennedy Never house? went there. Really? No. Okay. I drove by it once um, because for me, it isn't about... Of the place, yeah, um, and when I and I summered on the Cape a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and again being in Hyannis and being on Martha's Vineyard where Jackie Onassis lived, mm -hmm. you get that you get a feeling of being in an area where fame these famous amazing people have walked mm -hmm. and have eaten. It's a very food. romantic kind of ver Roman vision, right? Yeah, romantic and also. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just a really amazing feeling mm -hmm. to be a, in a place where someone that you really respect so much and who has done so much for the country was. Mm -hmm. um, so he was born uh, May 29, 1917. Nice. Died at age 46, too soon, November 22nd, 1963, I think. I might have the year wrong. Um, 
But he, what I love, one of the quotes that I love was, he said he was an involuntary hero when he saved mm. the people in the sinking of patrol torpedo boat PT-109. I never realized that PT stands for a patrol torpedo. I didn't know that either, and we had talked about that. And I, I love knowing things yeah. like that. Um, so he, was, he served from 1941 to 1945, was a lieutenant. And um, the article that I read talked about being around the sun, the sea, and the wind renewed his spirit. So he mm. loved sailing. He had a boat called the Victora. That was his sailboat mm. his whole life. And um, that's part of what made him able to be such a strong swimmer and know what to do when the boat was going down. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And um, so his medals included the Navy and Marine Corps Medal, the Purple Heart Medal, the American Defense Service Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, including three bronze stars, and the World War II Victory Medal. Wow. Yeah. Just a couple. Yeah. Amazing. Just a couple. Amazing. And he had um, that ongoing back problem. No, I've read about that. Yeah. So as a chiropractor, it's interesting yes. um, to hear about that and how they treated those things. Basically, the, the thing they used to do was rest and surgery. So he had an awful time recovering yeah. from all of these back surgeries right. um, throughout the years. And, and they talk about how it affected his political career and, and how he was. So mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting. And I remember he always used to sit in a rocking chair. Do you remember the rocking chair? I do. Because he, I think he felt that that was, you know, good support for his back. I just remember that somehow. Rocking does a certain thing to our, our neurons that, that yeah. helps the healing process. So maybe that's why. I don't know. He was progressive even then, even, even with he um, was health amazing. and wellness. And what was so interesting about the back problems was he was rejected the first time he tried to go into the army. Because they said, know you know, that. they checked him out and they said, you know, you're a good guy, but you have this back problem. We can't take you in the army. So what he did was, and this is, he was such an amazing person. He exercised for months and applied again, but this time to the Navy. They accepted him in the U.S. Naval Reserve, and he worked his way up to commander oh, of PT-109. Okay. So I didn't know that. I love researching this. So he was on a night mission, mm -hmm. given orders, um, had given orders to maneuver because he saw a, a nearby enemy boat. So he's maneuvering his ship in order to attack, and they broadsided him with their boat. They just rammed, and it split the boat in half. So that's, that's how two of the men died right there. The others are in the water. Okay, and he wow. talked. He got them all together on a life raft, and he said, look, we, we have to agree not to surrender. So he talked with them, not to surrender. He led them to a nearby island. So he helped Amazing. them all swim there. He had re-injured his back, but he, I'm going to get teary again. He put this injured guy, uh, what happened to him? He was badly injured. He put the, the strap from the guy's life jacket in his teeth and swam. So he pulled that other guy to safety because the other guy couldn't. Do anything. Talk about a profile and courage. Unbelievable. Right? So, you know, that's, that's, um, he was wounded. That's the Purple Heart Award. Mm -hmm. But, but saving another person's life in battle is a huge thing. He didn't have to. Completely heroic. He didn't have, you could have left him. Completely heroic. Unbelievable. So we, we are, um, in Massachusetts, yeah. in Boston, the site of the JFK Memorial Museum. Library, yeah. Library. Um, and they are planning a hundred plus events yes. to celebrate his hundredth oh, birthday. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I was reading also. It talked about the reason they're doing this um, is to celebrate and carry on his legacy Good. for um, you know to raise thoughtful and meaningful kinds of events um, and really grab his spirit and mm -hmm. embrace it mm -hmm. and continuing it on. So um, that's interesting. But even when you go on the internet, there are bakeries making huge cakes for JFK's birthday. And it, it seems to be everywhere. And even printing up um, just some of the centennial collab or collaborations that they have, the Red Sox are celebrating it. Perfect. Uh, Brandeis University, the city of Boston, the, the business district in Boston, the Hyannis Museum, which I have never been to there, hmm. the JFK National Historic Site in Beale Street in Brookline, just like you say, mm -hmm. um, and it goes it goes on and on and on. 
and and the state house is doing some things even massport you don't even think massport would do something about jfk but there maybe there's an, an installation there of some kind of event or well or i project. wonder if it's on the i wonder if it's in the harbor because he's a sailor or something to Could do with be, the yeah. boat yeah, yeah UMass know. Boston is doing something on Morrissey Boulevard, which is really close to the location of the JFK Museum. Mm -hmm. um, but they're having a, just to go back on the internet, they're having a Milestone and Mementos exhibit. Yes. Um, it exhibits the, chron it chronicles the historic milestones in his career and his administration as and the events of his personal life. So, yes. um, but what, what a tragic, <sighs> tragic story, the Kennedys. But yeah. um, Well, then that, that brings to mind JFK Jr. I remember and his tragic plane crash mm -hmm. on the way to the vineyard, and I think yeah. pulling in at dusk, he misread where the, the land and the water yeah. were because it was dusk and he shouldn't have been flying or something or all of visual those flight rules. All of those things, BFR. exactly. So if we have any pilots, uh, you know, yeah. would like to hear about how that that can happen. You know, how is it that it's so easy to do when you would think, well, if you're in a plane, you're driving straight, but and experienced, you know, yeah, you should. So, and then Caroline Kennedy Schlossberg, um, I think, has been doing a lot of really important things um, mm -hmm. politically. Mm -hmm. I know, was she ambassador to China, maybe? I actually don't she's know She's done that. some really yeah. important things yeah. lately. So she's carrying on his uh, torch. And um, Joe Kennedy III is our uh, one of our... Um, Congressman or someone local representative? He's our congressman. congressman. Yeah, I think so he is, he is yeah. uh, he's based yeah. in Attleboro. And um, so we're the fourth district. So he, we are part of his yeah. district. Yeah. yeah. Have you had the opportunity to meet him yet? I have met him and had um, actually have contacted him in the past for Boy Scout events because mm -hmm. um, I've helped some Eagle Scouts get their, well, 15 Eagle Scouts over five years as an Eagle Scout mentor. So I, I send out letters to dignitaries and say, just want you to know this amazing young man has done this project and, right. and has benefited the town and we're all so proud of him. We wonder if you would send a letter of commendation. So Very nice. Yeah, so, um, so Joe, my buddy Joe, Joseph Kennedy, Joe Kennedy, is one of the people who asks, you know, they want to know some information mm -hmm. so that they can specifically, or he, because I send out, actually, no, I send out the information about the project. So he references that in a letter. Oh, very he nice. He doesn't just send, you know, yeah. the rubber stamp, you know, we, we recognize your honor. He actually writes a letter and, and specifically addresses the accomplishments. It's similar to what Carolyn Dykema and Karen Spill could do. Very um, nice. Yeah. So we have some wonderful wonderful people um, representing us in I agree I in, agree in government state government and uh, local as well uh, uh, national as well I am um, when I was reading a little bit about about Joe Kennedy and what what he has done it, he's a, a young man and mm -hmm. Not very young, but young enough, yeah. um, and really has had quite the track record. But I, anytime I think of Kennedy, I think of philanthropy. I think of absolutely of, of giving back. Service. I think of a yeah. service-oriented family. Absolutely, like models for yeah. how we should raise our children in terms of you know not not a, a political angle, but in terms of just civic duty and responsibility and right. giving back. Um, right. which is really important. So his he's Joe Kennedy the third. So his dad Joe Kennedy right was JFK's. He Brother? was uh, okay. Bobby Kennedy's son. Okay. Yeah, Bobby and Ethel. Okay. Um, Joe was their son. We need Joe like married a Sheila tree. Rauch, and um, and Joe is one of their kids. So this Joe is one of Joe. This Joe is one of their kids. Yep. Okay. He's a redhead. He, he handsome, is. wonderful, goes out of his way. Yep. Have you ever been to the JFK Museum? In no. I haven't. Is it Columbia Point in Dorchester? Columbia Point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You could see at actually, you could see the planes fly over because you're right. You're close to Castle Lion, so you're you're seeing yeah. that that line yep. right to the no, airport. No, I've not been there. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's really special. I've not been there either, but I've been to that area, mm -hmm. and I do have some friends that have been there and taken people there, and it is it is truly amazing. So. Um, well, anything like that, I, I think, um, to me, the the important mementos of. Mm -hmm. of a life like that would be the work that they've mm -hmm. done absolutely you know and the civil rights and um you know the the jfk's work toward the moon the space program mm -hmm. that was he did that you know so his whole positive thrust and let's let's do 
as much as we can do and, and show the rest of the world how amazing we are and, you know, make advances here. And um, I remember the presidential fitness program. I was part, right? I was part of that. I got those right? patches in yeah, school. Yeah, the patches. He and did the little, that? I'm pretty sure he was one of the ones that started that. That's amazing. So, you know, those kinds of initiatives, to me, are the things that I want to mm. remember. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to go look at his shoes or his first book or, you know, or his right. house. Right. I really treasure the, the action. Really the, the milestones rather than the The milestones, the, the action. Exactly. How he made this country great. You know, what, what he did. How his broad thinking, you know, really not, not focused on this issue mm. or this issue, but really big picture thinking. Um, ask not what you what your country can do for you. You know, he really thought about how can we make our country amazing. Oh, let's go into space to start the space program. Right. Um, you you know, know, it's interesting also looking here. Every year they do a, um, uh, so Carolyn Kennedy um, gives a Profile and Courage Award. Do you know yes. who won it this year? Was it Obama? It was Obama. Yes. Yes, it was. Yes. And so they actually have um, his speech on a video attached to oh, the... Yeah, so an amazing thing to think about. Um, and so, you know, when you go on the website to look at things, I will make sure that I visit that this year and, um, and would love to be able to take my kids. I'm not quite sure that they're engaged in that kind of thing at, at being teenagers right now, but certainly would love to... Love that we have it in our backyard. Love that it is. It is so meaningful to being somebody who's in Massachusetts now, right? And um, and certainly having a Kennedy legacy, Absolutely. as well as a local politician for ourselves here. Yeah, and I really think he is kind of an international figure mm -hmm. in a way. I Absolutely. think that you know when people think of America, I think he is one of the one of the founding and one of the um, significant more modern people who mm -hmm. put a stamp on what it means to be an American, right? you know, mm -hmm. and there have been many, but there have been many. <laughs> uh, and 44. more to come, 45 and more to come. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely um, have to talk more about that. But um, just want to talk about next week. Are there any ideas yeah. that we're going to talk about for well, next week? Well, I think what we're going to do, first of all, is think about anything that's happening here locally. Yep. There's going to be graduation. There so is. probably touch on graduation yep. and and talk, refer to you know what what's the valedictorian saying and you know really I love hearing the the graduation speeches yep. and I'm just so amazed it is going to be your birthday although it's not a, that's kind of a, a local event that is a local and, uh, event that is Friday and, and yeah and happy birthday thank you to you happy and <laughs> uh, and then so nationally. Again, we want to see what happens for me with Trump and the Paris Accords. So we'll make is sure to he, talk about that. Is he going to do that? And um, we'll just have to see what else we come up with. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Yep. And have a great night. And thanks for joining us. <laughs>